Hey, it's Vanessa from CraftyGemini.com. Today's tutorial is on how to make a super cute pair of pants for any baby or toddler. This project is great for beginners for three reasons. One, we're making them out of a t-shirt. So it's going to allow you to repurpose some old t-shirts you may have lying around your house. Two, the inside seams that you see here don't even have to be finished because the stretch fabric of the t-shirt doesn't fray, so that's a plus. And three, you don't even have to hem the pants because we're going to use the bottom part of the t-shirt that's already hemmed. I'll show you how we do that. Let's get started. Here I have an adult size medium shirt, which is what we'll be using to make our baby or toddler pants. What I'm going to do now is to put some pins in a couple of places just to hold the fabric in place. Oh. You can pretty much customize this tutorial any way you want because you don't have a specific pattern to follow. In this case, we're going to use a pair of pants that my baby already wears. So that way you can make them into shorts or pants, whatever you want to do. Here you see the pants. I'm going to fold them in half. Either way is fine. You just want to fold them in half so that the crotch sticks out. Just like this. What you're going to do now is put this to the left side. I'm going to turn it over and match up this edge of the pant legs with the edge of my t-shirt here. And notice I'm trying to get the pants down to the bottom right here because this is going to be the bottom of my legs. I won't have to hem it since the bottom of the t-shirt is already hemmed and that's going to be an even quicker way to finish these pants. Now what I need to do is to cut along here. I'm going to go ahead and leave some space because you need to account for the seam allowance. I've gone with my chalk marker and outlined the same shape of these pants that we have folded on here, leaving about three quarters of an inch to an inch wider than that. I'm going to cut along the traced line with my rotary cutter. If you don't have a rotary cutter, you can use a pair of scissors, just be careful and try to keep the fabric from moving on you because remember I said when you're working with knits anything that stretches it's a little bit tricky so I'm just going to cut across here just like that and now this piece you see why it's important that I put some pins to keep this nice and together what I'm going to do now is to turn this over and basically cut out a mirror image of this first pattern piece that we just cut out lay it on right there, make sure to match the bottom edges and the edge here so you have the exact same size and do the same thing, cut it right next to it so you have your other pattern piece. Now we remove the excess t-shirt and here we have two pieces. I'm going to remove these pins. Now you want to open both of the cut pieces out and put it so that the pretty side of this one is facing up. So here I see that this is the right side, okay, the pretty side. And then I'm going to take my other piece and put it pretty side, which is here, facing down. So both your pieces should have the pretty sides touching, just like you see here. Now I'm going to line up these raw edges, all these edges here. And what I'm going to do next is pin this in place along this top part here, which is where we'll be stitching. So go ahead and pin it in place on both sides. Here you see I've sewn on both curved edges using a half an inch seam allowance on each side. One thing I want you to note is that because we're using a t-shirt and the fabric is stretchy, I went ahead and put a stretch needle in my machine and that's what I wanted to use for this. Aside from that, I chose a stitch that is specifically for stretchy fabrics. It may look like a straight stitch on camera, but it's actually a really kind of slanted zigzag stitch and it's actually called a stretch stitch. So do some research, read your user manual and see which is the stitch that your machine has specifically for stretch. The reason that this is important is because if you did a straight stitch, once you stretch the fabric, the thread and the stitches will actually pop and it won't hold in place. So since this is a little bit of a zigzag kind of on an angle, it allows me to stretch the fabric without the stitches popping out. So we have that and I've done that to both sides. Now what you're going to do is take this in the center and match up those two center seams. Where you've stitched, you want to match them up like this. And now when you lay this flat, you see that it actually starts looking like a pair of pants. Now I'm pinning the center crotch seam, matching up the raw edges, just pinning it in place. When I get to the center here, I want these to match up. So notice, here and here. What I'm doing with the actual seam allowance is putting this one to one side and here to the other. What that's going to do is allow these seams to lay flat. If I did them both to one side, you see it becomes a little bit more bulky there. So do them so they match up in opposite directions. This is flapping to the right, and this one is flapping to the left. And that's going to allow it to lay nice and flat. And it's going to make it easier for those center seams to match up. I've stitched the entire center crotch from beginning to end. Remember we did matching up these center seams here. And I used, again, the stretch stitch and using a half an inch seam allowance. Now all we have to do 
is the waistband. To make the casing and the waistband so we can slip some elastic through there, we need to figure out what is the front and the back side of our pants. Here you see that the crotch is sticking up. This is going to be the back side of the pants. What I'm going to do now is fold this over. I kind of like to just tuck it under my fingers like this, and you see it'll fold all the way around. You have to figure out how wide the elastic is that you're using. In this case, I'm going to be using half an inch wide elastic, so I want it just to be a touch bigger than half an inch. You don't want to have too much of a space in there because that's when you run into the problem of your elastic twisting and turning on you. So I'm going to do about three quarters of an inch. And you want to just measure that with a seam gauge. And that's about there. And I'm going to pin it in place just so I know what the entire rest of the waistband needs to look like. I've pinned the waistband, and you see here, all the way around. Now what you want to do is mark here so you don't forget. You're going to stitch this casing down, but you're going to leave this marked space open. So just mark a little bit on each side of the center seam on one of the sides. So I'm just choosing this back side. I'm going to not stitch here. What I'm going to do now is take this to my machine. I'm going to start stitching here, making sure to back tack to lock in those last few stitches and go all the way around my waistband and come back here and stop again and back tack this. As you're stitching this in place, make sure you don't pull the fabric as you're doing that. Because if you do, then you're going to be outstretching the t-shirt. Since it's stretched, just try to guide it through. I'm coming right around to the end. I'm going to back tack. And you can see here, I've left this section that I marked earlier unstitched. That's how it should look. So here I have my elastic. I'm using half an inch wide elastic. You can use three-eighths of an inch. Sometimes people use three-quarters or even an inch wide, and it's just the width of the elastic on how thick you want it. My baby is only nine months old, so this half an inch will do plenty. And to measure out the elastic, what I do is I measure him around his waistline, and he's about 16 inches around. And what I've done is I've cut the elastic one inch smaller than what his waist size is. I like it to fit him a little bit loose since we use cloth diapers. Um, if you want it to fit a little snug on the elastic, just go ahead and do maybe two or three inches smaller than their waistline. Now to, to feed it through the casing, I have a big safety pin here. And what I do is take one end of your elastic and pin it just like this. And now remember the opening that we left here, you're going to feed it through all the way around. So I'm just going to push my safety pin through there. As I'm feeding my elastic through, you can see that I haven't even made it halfway around and I'm coming to the end of my elastic. What I like to do here is just pin this in place, anywhere here, just to keep it from going all the way inside of your casing. Then you're going to have to pull the whole thing out and redo it. So just put a pin there just to keep it from going all the way in. I've removed the safety pin and the other pin, and here I have my two ends of my elastic. I'm going to scrunch the fabric away from it so I have some, some space to work with the elastic when I stitch it. So I'm just going to overlap them just a tiny bit like this so that I don't lose too much of the length of the elastic and put a pin in place. Here you see what I'm doing. I'm putting the overlap section of the elastic underneath my presser foot and I know I have a pin there but you got to be real careful not to stitch over it. I'm going to bring my presser foot down just to hold the elastic in place and I'm going to take one or two stitches real slowly. The stitch I'm using to stitch down the elastic is a zigzag stitch. So I'm in the elastic now. I can remove my pin and I don't have to worry about that. Now the needle in place in those first few stitches is going to hold the elastic in place. You see how it's staying there. And now I'm just going to guide this through and finish doing zigzag stitches. Now that our elastic is stitched together, all you do is tug on the waistband and you see it's all going to hide in there. Stretch it out how you want it. And now you see all you have left is this little bit of fabric to stitch closed. So we finished stitching the last little bit of the casing closed and turned them inside out and here is what we get as a finished product. A super cute pair of pants for any little baby boy or toddler. This is a great beginner project because it allows you to repurpose some of the old t-shirts that you have lying around your house. So I hope that you'll give it a try. Until next time, get inspired and be creative on a budget.